Welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Good morning. Cable bills going through the roof? What's going on? Yeah, cable bills are going up. The problem is, is that um, a lot of times what they're doing is announcing an increase in the 2 to 4% range, so it doesn't seem that bad. But what's happening is they're shifting some of the extra costs to these added-on fees. So you may see something on your bill like a broadcast TV fee or a regional sports network fee, and so it's not as obvious to consumers that their bill is going up as much as, they, as, it, as it actually is. I had DirecTV satellite. I got so fed up with how much money I was paying, I went to DirecTV streaming, and it seemed like they were pushing me in that direction. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why are these guys pushing us into the streaming world? Well, if you think about, you know, DirecTV, they have to install an, you know, a dish on your roof. They have to come out to your house if there's something wrong. So a lot of the cable companies really think their future in terms of, uh, you know, keeping costs down is to use streaming versus, you know, linear or satellite uh, cable TV or, um, you know, just because it's, it's a lot harder for them to maintain those signals to get out. They have to have trucks to go visit your house. So the cost to them is quite high, and that's reflected in your bill. Is that why they're raising the fees on the cable, figuring we'll gouge these people for as long as they want to stick around? Well, you know, they're, they're in a tough place because the reality is that their content costs are going up. So we have all these streaming services that are competing for content. You know, um, all of the networks are trying to get a little bit more money for them. So their costs are actually going up higher than the amounts that they're charging people in the TV business. So the other thing is that they have to be competitive with all of these new streaming services, and that's why you're seeing you know, some of the, the services, like you mentioned, with DirecTV, they now have their own streaming service so that they, compete, they can compete with these streaming uh, services from everyone from Netflix to YouTube to Hulu. Yeah, seems like no one's happy. Isn't ESPN cutting all sorts of budgets because people just are, are, are cutting the cord? Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that people found out, too, is that if you're not into sports, that ESPN fee is probably the highest part of your bill, um, somewhere between 7 and $8 a month. And the idea is that, you know, all the people who don't watch sports sort of cover the cost for the people who do. So that's starting to fall apart right now, and I would not be surprised if you see um, an ESPN streaming service. And, in fact, now there's a streaming service um, called um, – Philo that actually is designed for people who don't want sports. So it's sixteen dollars a month. You get a lot of the content you get with cable, but you're not paying for sports. Yeah. What's interesting is there's it. It's not all or nothing for a lot of Americans, right? We'll tap into the Olympics. We'll watch a couple of games here. Maybe we'll check an inning or two there. We don't really dive into the you know X's and O's. But what what happens to those people? So that's the one concern is that right now we have this great diversity of content. So because of what I mentioned before where, you know, if you have a niche interest, other people are probably, you know, subsidizing it for you, we don't want to see that diversity of content disappear. Um, and so what we expect to see is some of these niche services will launch their own streaming services. And we've seen that also if you're interested in, um, you know, if you like horror movies, there's a streaming service called Shudder that will um, do that. If your kids watch Japanese anime, there's a service called Crunchyroll. It's $12 a month so it's not quite a la carte but that's the direction that we're moving yeah i know a lot of people are saying i don't like the uh the kardashians and i'm not going to watch it fine don't watch it but you're still paying for it right and that's why i think we're starting to see they call them skinnier tv bundles so even the cable companies now are reacting to that and sometimes what they're doing is segmenting uh lower lower cost tiers of channels the problem is, is that if you, if you have sort of a diverse interest, it's really hard to find one service that's going to give you everything you want. And with some of the services, they don't have all of the local channels, so you may have to resort to an antenna or another way to get um, you know, your local ABC, NBC, yeah. and CBS. I know a lot of people here in St. Louis want to have the Fox Sports Midwest for Cardinal Baseball, but why do they make you buy all these other channels to get the one channel you want? It seems like there's a, there's a lawsuit waiting to happen there. Well, that's the business model that the cable industry has always, you know, worked on. And so it's, it, it takes a long time for companies like cable companies that are really entrenched, that have these revenue streams that they're really used to, to move away from them. But the fact is that, um, you know, in the TV business, there is a lot of competition right now, and that's something that we haven't seen. It's a different story, though, when you get to broadband, because what you're doing is offloading a lot of your entertainment to your Internet connection, and there's actually fewer choice. And so you may wind up paying that same company that 
you just cut the TV service with for your broadband, and then a lot of times your broadband costs are going to go up when you debundle it. Yeah. Uh, Jim, going further, uh, what's the future hold? Is, is, is the cord going to be cut for everybody, or are there going to be people who are still going to have cable years from now? I think there's always people who are going to have cable. Um, you know, the great thing about cable is you turn it on, you know that you're going to get a decent picture. It's reliable. Um, if something goes wrong, they will send someone out to your house. And a lot of people like that. Um, I think it'll probably break down by age demographics where, you know, there are people like my son who just everything is streaming for him, who doesn't really understand that there's any difference. Um, you know, when you have these um, streaming services, sometimes the sites go down. Sometimes, you know, during high demand things, um, you don't get the same quality of picture that you get with cable TV. But I think, um, you know, increasingly more people are going to turn to streaming. Yeah. Jim Wilcox, Consumer Reports, Senior Electronics Editor. Jim, have a good day. Thanks for checking in.